Hi and welcome. It's Lucy here from Inclusive Change at Work. That's icaw-cic.com. I'm here talking about the Castle Conference, which is going to be happening in Bristol on the 25th of April this year, which is 2024. If you're listening to it after 2024, where have you been? So the Castle Conference is going to be a conference that is it's an event that we are doing with Digital Safety, Community Interest Company, but we've also got a whole load of exhibitors and guests joining us. And today I'm here to talk with one of them. So hi, Nikki from Discover Your Banks. Hi, Lucy. Honestly, so excited for this conference. It's going to be epic. I, I feel that too, although there is a sense of crikey, there's not even a month to go now. So we've got a lot of we've got a lot going on in the next month. So yes. So I feel your excitement, but giving us a chance to to have a chat, can you tell us a bit about yourself and and your organization? Sure. Yes, I live in Bristol. I've been running my own business for the last 17 years, which makes me feel old. But the last 10 years I've been running Discover Your Banks. So we help organisations and individuals with their health, their well-being and their happiness through workshops, through our podcast, through leadership development workshops, through our online mentoring programme. So we have many ways of helping people. But my own journey, I had a stroke through stress 13 years ago and had to learn how to recover and had to wow. learn, even though I knew all about well-being and I had A-levels in anatomy and physiology, I had to really put my own well-being first. And that involved lots of practical stuff that I now teach. That's a really, really hard, hard thing to talk about in a way. And actually, but but something that I I'm, I have spoken to before, Nikki, I'm not going to shy away from the fact that we, we've known it, we know each other. But that whole story of of your own well-being and having to put that first as a woman of a certain age, I know we kind of digress in, but that is something that's really important, isn't it? But also really difficult to do. Yeah, sure. So. At a conference a couple of weeks ago, we were described as the ham in the sandwich. In other words, that squeezed generation. So, mm. you know, supporting and helping our parents, having having children that we still help. I have three grandchildren now. So like you say, there's all those family family dynamics as well as being a woman in business and everything that that involves too. So, yeah, the ham in the sandwich. <laughs> Quite like that. I, I get that the sandwich generation and, I, and I've been one of those for quite a while I, I'm, I'm it's coming down the top layer is coming off I'm an open sandwich a bit more now so it's not so bad <laughs> I feel like I've digressed quite quite a bit on this particular um, conversation but okay so discover your bounce based in Bristol you're going to be exhibiting at the Con castle conference um why is this important to you yeah, I think, you know, bringing well-being and practical well-being into conferences and events and, and talking to people and reminding them of, of why that's important is really, you know, important to me. It's a lot of importance. But also, my daughter was uh, very badly bullied at school from the age of six to 15 when I took her out of school partially. So it's a very personal thing for me. And I know the importance of supporting our young people and making sure they have a, a positive experience in life however that is because unfortunately some children don't and we know the the damage that that can cause and, and what they can take into adulthood as well so yeah very much a, a personal um, passion of mine to look after our young children. I am well, so just mentioning about your daughter and and thank you for for being able to share that and and talk about that was there an impact from the online world and and being online that would would have been part of her her journey or her story at all yeah i just i just thank the universe that there wasn't much of an online space like msn was like a new trendy thing when she was a teenager but if we had the level of online spaces that we do now i know mm -hmm. that what we, get, what we went through would have been so much worse so wow. I think people get behind a keyboard and forget that humanity so yeah I think it's really important to highlight that and like you say just to make people aware that it's not okay you know no no it's not so I mean one of my questions then is is 
is it all that bad? And and what are you hearing from parents and young people, for instance, about about digital well-being on this particular topic? Yeah, well, I think it's the same as anything, isn't it? Like, I think the online space, people talk about money being evil, you know, the root of all evil, but actually it's the person behind that modality, you know, and I think it's the same with the online space. The online space has been amazing. It's connected our young people to mm. knowledge that they could never have before. You know, they have so many opportunities. They can travel the world. They can connect with people all around the world. So that's a really positive, and I don't want to negate from that. So I think the online space has enabled so much more for our young people mm. and given them lots more opportunities. But like you say, with everything, there is there is good and bad. It's like when you talk about businesses, you know, some businesses get a bad name and there are good and bad in every industry. So, but I think what's important these days is actually to speak out about that when things aren't okay, not, you know, years gone by, we might have accepted that, maybe some of that was okay and actually I think we need to collect our voices together and go no that's not okay. Yeah I'm, I'm seeing and I, I don't know about you that there's been articles in the paper and, and things coming out about I think it came from the Children's Commissioner actually in the UK that more and more people are normalizing harassment particularly of girls online and we're saying well that's expected we, we expect that kind of thing. Yeah, I think, and and maybe historically we have scrolled on by and and not stood up necessarily. You know, not maybe mm-hmm. supported it or, or commented, but but not stood up for what we believe in. And actually, like you say, if I know the best thing I ever said to my daughter was um, when she was being bullied, I said, "I can't take this away, but I can stand." by you you know I'm in your corner I'm here for you whatever you need we'll do it together and going into school Mm. and talking to the the teachers together I know made a massive difference so again if we can give that support to people online and they know they're not alone or or we can see something and actually stand up and say that's that's not okay then I think we can we can create a change you know it's got to be that that zero tolerance you know we are seeing it in the kind of edi space where people there's more allyship than ever before so i think we need to just increase that increase that trend let me just explain or just ask you edi what do you mean by edi oh equality diversity and inclusion or equity diversity and inclusion so yes yeah no i thought so it's just that when people are listening sometimes if they haven't heard these phrases if they've they've not been in that particular kind of arena sometimes we we go we go I think I know what we're talking about but I'm not quite sure one of the things that at inclusive change that we talk about is is building the future of work with neurodiversity in mind and sometimes the word neurodiversity is something that people go I think I know but I'm not quite sure and it's kind of the same with things like EDI and things like that isn't it yeah and it's always it's always good to to ask and be curious isn't it you know I love uh, you know finding out new new phrases or new new things about people so yeah (laughs) yeah can I just touch on a bit of neurodiversity actually because I talk about that and at the conference I will be talking about um, digital safeguarding and neurodiversity neurodiversity being the fact that we all have different brains and we all process the world in a different way. But sometimes some of us might have brains that process it in a different way, uh, a very different way and, and ways that can be, can be detrimental to, to some of the things that happen on the internet. Is neurodiversity something that is relevant or, or that we can talk about in terms of, in terms of discover your bouncer and what you do? Yeah, I think very much from, with my discover your bounce hat on then I try to talk about well-being very being very individual so how stress affects different people so when we're in a room of like 100 people we say hands up who eats more when they're stressed and hands up who doesn't eat at all and hands up who sleeps more and hands up who sleeps less and people look around the room and go oh actually we're all really different in how we process stress Mm -hmm. and then if you add that neurodivergence in there you have to learn the 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 particular person and create that safe space for them so so that it's okay for them to say actually I'm not having a very good day today or I am feeling very overwhelmed Mm. and then from putting my family hat on me my daughters and my granddaughter all have different neurodiversities (laughs) so I think that's the right terminology yeah neurodivergence yep yeah yes 
So we we say we're a neurospicy family because then you don't have to go into all the different terminology. But it very much what we all have different needs and, and wants within our our family dynamic. So definitely, like you say, asking people, you know, how can I help and what do you need? I think it, it, it's how yes, that's of, a phrase I've got from you. Yeah, yeah. definitely. That the how can I help you? What do you need? Isn't just in terms of that well-being space, is it? It's it's just being a, a kind human and and saying that to people. Yeah, because you add you add stress into a situation. Someone who acts, you know, there was a, a CIPD absence management survey, and they said, you know, if a team of ten people are all stressed, three of them will fall out with the rest of the team, not because they're horrible people, but because under that level of stress, they will either want to fight you or for you to go away because for flight when it kicks in they won't act yeah. in the same way as they would on a normal day so you add a neurodivergence into that mix and actually you get a whole different array of responses so you need the people around you to spot what's going on and you need someone who who feels safe to you so that you can communicate what you need yeah can i you dig into something <laughs> <laughs> Can I dig into something about mental health and well-being and young people and the, the importance of being able to manage and be able to support so that we've got people in the future and we've got a greater work. We, we've got I can't even get the words out here. I may even have to um, have think about this in a different way. Right. Mental health and, and young people. Thinking about the impact that that's going to have on our workforce in the future, if we don't address and don't support young people in managing their mental health, what impact is that going to have on employment and employers in the future? Well, we're, we're already seeing a shrinking workforce. You know, they talked about the great res resignation after COVID. A lot mm -hmm. of people decided to retire early or do something different. Uh, you know, so, so looking at, at the top end of the you know the older end of the workforce we know that there's people that have left already and I think that may well continue you might get some of them mm -hmm. back but they're going to want a lot more flexible working in that and then you look at mm. the young people and like you say we know that the 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 younger people that have some kind of mental health challenge we know those those numbers are rising and the numbers yeah. of sick days in the workplace that are taken every year is just going up by a couple of million ish every year so just a couple of million just a couple of million so yeah and you, you know and you take mental health challenges and then like musculoskeletal conditions which mm -hmm. are usually they usually have some kind of stress impact on them oh, wow. so our workforce is going to shrink if we don't provide mm -hmm. that support because if you do support someone when they go through a challenge they are usually more loyal than someone who hasn't had that support. So mm. if we can support our young people in the workplace, but, you know, young people, they they need to know. Someone asked what resilience was the other day and it was yes. like, yeah, we use the term. We bandy it around like, oh, you need to be resilient. Well, what does that what does that mean? And I think if you can give someone that extra time and support early days, then they're going to stay with you or if. If they don't stay with you, at least they're going to have a good time in wherever they go next. You know, I think it's a, yeah. a just a good thing to do. But yeah, if we are heading for a lot of skills shortages, and if you can, you know, a lot of our young people they think in such a different way. They're amazing. They they problem solve in a way that leaves me standing. <laughs> you know, so if you give them the right support, you're going to have a really good team. I totally agree with. You pick up on the word resilience then what would you what would you how would you define resilience is that something that that we can do yeah I think I think we have a, a level of natural resilience I think we all have that survival instinct within us but I think there are tools that you can learn and skills that you can learn that if you have a bad day or a health challenge or something goes wrong or someone needs your attention you know it's it's being ready to act when something challenging happens and also to know how to rest and recover afterwards so sometimes you know we have a really busy time in work maybe there's a deadline a big project and years ago it used to be something really big would happen and then we'd have some downtime before we went on to the next peak well actually that doesn't happen so people ha are having to learn how to recover 
while still keeping going. It's not necessarily a stop start thing. So again, knowing what is good for that person. So I know with me sleep, Mm. like I have to, that's how I recover is my sleep. And if I, if everything else is really busy, as long as I'm sleeping, okay, that I can, I can manage and keep going, but we have to know how Mm. to recharge ourselves, whether that's being around other people or, you know, being silence. We need to know those things. And you only know that through trial and error, but you you can get to build your own kind of toolkit so you, you can be a, be more resilient. You're, I call it bounce back ability, but I would, of course, because yeah. of the thing. <laughs> because of the name, discover your bounce, get your bounce back. Absolutely. So in terms of, again, you say so many things that make me want to go into deeper conversations. Thank you. Where you mentioned that, that those that always on kind of culture. So we used to maybe have times where we can go, right, that was really intense. Now I've got, you know, at least an hour off or at least, you know, a a couple of hours downtime or back in the old days. Okay. So let me just paint a picture. Back in the days when I worked in law enforcement, you know, you, you do some incredibly intense work and then you might have that downtime down at the park go as a team and you'd you'd go in go and and debrief and talk about the stuff that that might have happened my my partners in the army that's the kind of thing that they used to do is they do really intense work and then they'd they'd work hard and they'd play hard that always on culture now though is that allowing us that downtime is that it how do we how do we manage this yeah and and just to pick up on the community thing like you say we used to have a lot more communities physically around us so maybe that was mates mm-hmm. in the pub maybe that was a social group maybe that was going to a, a keep fit class you know I go dancing a couple of times a week and and that's one of my communities you know maybe yeah. a church was our community and our younger people don't necessarily have access to those in-person communities because they build this online world you know so I know lots of people work is probably one of their only communities so having a safe space at work is really important for them but also Mm. a lot of their communities are online so if you add in the the cyber bullying and that kind of thing that online world isn't their safe community anymore so where do they find their community so, so not only do you take me deeper into the conversation, we say the same things at the same time. Sorry. Yeah, but also that always on. You know, my husband will, will say if my phone lights up, he will give me about three seconds before I pick it up unless yeah. I turn it over or physically move away from it. So all, always on, does, you know, the brain resets with sleep and silence. So always being on and always reacting isn't necessarily a good thing for us because it used to be fight or no. flight you know you you fought a saber-toothed tiger then you either escaped or you or you killed it whatever and then you went home you had some food and you slept for 12 hours or whatever it is mm-hmm. you know we don't get that off it's just on and then a little bit off and then on again and a little bit off and on again so we never get that chance to actually rest and recover unless we really consciously do that it's an intentional aspect of doing that kind of stuff, isn't it? That that recovery. Yeah. Yeah, because it's like when you when you go to events, I've heard it called the event hangover because you have a couple of days, you know, we go to conferences and things and you talk to people all day mm-hmm. or for a couple of days. And then the next day you do need that recovery time. Otherwise, you do feel just a bit foggy and a bit tired. So, yeah, recovery is important. <laughs> Absolutely. And I just want to, again, pick up on something around fight and flight. So fight, flight and freeze are, are kind of the responses to anxiety and stress with with that we naturally have. And even animals have them. If you watch dogs and cats, they will go into fight and flight. Um, the fight, flight kind of phenomenon, if we're talking about being online and that digital world, we're getting the, the impact in our body and our brains are having to go into fight and flight more and more often aren't they because we're seeing and perceiving threats from things online that may not even be a threat sometimes it might just be a text message yeah and 
you know, we have evolved as a species massively, <laughs> but actually our brain chemistry and our brain function, you know, how our brain is made up hasn't. So we still have, we have the prefrontal cortex, which is what sets us apart from other mammals. So we can be inspired and problem solve and, and you know, do act differently. The amazing things we do. Yeah. But in times of in when we are in fight or flight, that bit of our brain shuts off and we go back to the oldest part of our brain, which is the amygdala and the hippocampus. So in fight or flight, we lose 60 percent of our brain's ability to function. So if you imagine you perceive a threat, which is something online, you lose 60 percent of your brain's ability. And then when you are away from that, you'll go, oh, I should have said this or I could have done that. Or because that prefrontal cortex kind of switches back on when I'm we're safe. Again. So like you say, those threats used to be a, a saber toothed tiger or whatever, and now it can be an email, a text. And particularly, our brain can't tell the difference between real and imaginary. So if we tell ourselves a story, so I had a letter from one of the teachers when my daughter was being bullied, and I got really offended by this letter. I was like, that's, a that's outrageous, blah, 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 blah. And my husband said, let me read it. So I let him read it, and he went, I don't see what you see. I don't see the threat. I don't see yeah. that that she's been unreasonable. But in my fight or flight mentality, you had to completely. Yeah, I was mama bear straight away. And then he read it and went, "No, it's not." So when I moved away, did something else, came back to it, I could see what he meant. So, so yeah, you think of that. If we are stressed and then we go online, we're going to have a very different experience anyway. Wow. You again, you're talking my language. Whenever I hear anybody talking about the amygdala and the hippocampus, that hits me straight away because it's something I talk about a lot when I talk about neurodivergence and and different people's reactions to 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 stress and, and anxiety in different ways. There's a whole lot I can talk to you about there. But I've got one last question to ask you, which is okay, we talked about a whole lot of different stuff and and the Castle Conference and, and talking about digital be, being for young people, we want to be able to try and think about things that might make a change, that might make an impact. So what do you think we could do to make a change and support young people in a digital world now? Oh, that's a big one, isn't it? I think, I think teaching people the effect of stress on what they do every day, really mm -hmm. good teaching people how to respond and actually being able to say that is not okay or if someone says something that's mean one of my techniques is oh I'm sorry I didn't quite hear that could you say that again because then they, <laughs> then they have to consciously say that mean thing to you twice if someone says something to you twice they are not a nice person <laughs> so I think it, okay it, they're it, off my list yeah teaching emotional intelligent responses I think or emotional yeah. intelligence I think is a really good thing I think like you say having allies and safe spaces teaching people where they can come and go look this is happening is is this okay is this right am I reading more into this you know being able to yeah. create those spaces and then yeah having a pathway that people can report when they are being bullied or it's not okay mm. and you know I think those would be the <coughs> yeah my suggestions Brilliant. but I could probably go on all day so I won't <laughs> <laughs> we can do that on the day of so we can do that on the 25th of april i almost Maybe. thought i was going to say the wrong month there which i did earlier hey nikki i want to say thank you thank you for coming to to chat discoveryourbounce.com is your website so how do people get in touch with you apart from going on your website yeah the website shows all the different things we do and it's split up into the different parts of the business we also have discover your bounce community on yeah. facebook so we put inspiration, we put some funny things in there. Again, it's a safe space online that you can just come and chill. Yeah, that's quite good. And I'm on LinkedIn. If anyone wants to connect on LinkedIn, I'm just Nikki Marshall on LinkedIn. So thank you. So that's Nikki Marshall, discoveryourbounce.com. Find you on LinkedIn. Just look up Nikki Marshall and we'll we'll find you on there. Or come to the Castle Conference. The Castle Conference, all about digital well-being for young people. 
will be on the 25th of April 2024. That's going to be at Lee Court and we're hosting it alongside Digital Safety, which is a community interest company with basically digital safety at its heart. We want to make communities as safe as possible online with them. And I'm Lucy from Inclusive Change at Work. That's ICAW-CIC.com. If you want to find out more about joining us at the conference, tickets are just £9 and you will get a full day of networking, of speakers, of fabulous lunch and even breakfast for £9. You cannot, cannot go wrong with that is all I can say. Exactly. It's a bargain. But more importantly, and, and having spoken to different people now through through doing these interviews and bringing together a community of different people, I cannot tell you how incredible it will be to bring all those people together in a room and be able to start talking about how we tackle this topic and, and doing things as a group and as a community. That word comes across in every single interview and conversation that I have. Community is is just the core theme running through everything.